Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. This webinar is brought to you by Department of Medical Imaging, Faculty of Health Sciences, Masa University. I'm Shazin Hussein. I'm lecturer from Medical Imaging Program, and I will be your moderator for today. Okay, today we are presenting about the roles and safety of radiographers during COVID-19 pandemic. Presented by our Honorable Mr. Muhammad Muzaki, a senior radiographer from Teaching Hospital University, Putra, Malaysia. Okay, just a little housekeeping before we proceed. If you have any question, if you have any comment that you would like to ask during the session or after the session, feel free to drop your question and also your comment on the comment section. And I will bring this up during Q&A session. Okay, um, without further ado, uh, we would like to welcome Mr. Muhammad Muzaki. Hello, Assalamualaikum everyone. Waalaikumsalam. Hi, Mr. Muzaki. How are you? Uh, fine, thank you. Alhamdulillah. How are you, Ms. Azwin? Good, Alhamdulillah. Sehat. Okay. Okay, hi, Ms. Muzaki. Okay, welcome. Uh, and we are so honored to have you today. Uh, okay, let me introduce a little bit about Mr. Muzaki. Our speaker for today is a senior radiographer from Teaching Hospital, University Putra, Malaysia. He has a vast experience, more than 13 years experience as a radiographer, as well as interventional radiographer. He obtained his master in biomedical engineering from UM, and also he an active member in ISSRT, International Society of Radiographer and Radiation Technologies. He is also a secretary from Malaysia Society of Radiographer. Okay, uh, so Mr. Muzaki, without further ado, uh, I will leave the screen for you to proceed with your session. Okay, uh, thank you, Ms. Moderator, Ms. Azwin. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to say thank you very much to Masa University for giving me the, this opportunity for this uh, special session to share uh, knowledge, experience about uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we are focusing on the uh, radiographer rules and safety. So I think this topic is interesting because uh, not everybody know about uh, who is radiographer, especially in a healthcare worker, as a healthcare worker. So, so uh, for me, this session uh, is a good opportunity for me to expose or get everybody know who is a radiographer and what they are doing during this COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, uh, so to you. okay, Ken, uh, I will proceed with my slide after this. <clears throat> okay, everyone, thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, this is uh, okay, my slide. Okay, um, our topic today is a uh, role and safety of radiographer during COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, this uh, this session I will share out to all of you uh, what radiographer do and what is the safety that we need when we are facing the COVID-19 pandemic currently and previously. Uh, we still fighting for the pandemic. Okay, before we move on, okay, we go through to the content of the session this afternoon. Uh, I will talk about a little bit uh, about uh, introduction, the timeline uh, of the pandemic. Okay, the, who is the radiographer? Okay, the next one about safety guideline that provided by uh, Ministry of Health Malaysia, and also we go to international level uh, what ISRRT guideline uh, international society of radiographer and radiological technologies and then we go to msr we third uh, content will be radiographer rules what is the challenges during this pandemic? Because uh, currently, uh, most of uh, community, they're, they're aware about the doctors, they're aware about the nurses, 
and they aware about the maybe the medical assistant but they don't aware about radiographer okay so the uh this afternoon i will share what radiographer do okay uh and then i will explain also about the our workload the radiographer workload and also part a bit about what uh, a standard operation procedure that we have to face during this pandemic and, and then we move on to uh, conclusion <clears throat> this i think one hour session will be good and interactive i hope all of you will share any of your experience or any question to me and we can share the knowledge together and i also can learn from all of you all the 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 watcher here okay okay we move to the next slide <clears throat> okay we go to a bit about the covid 19 timeline in malaysia okay uh, from this timeline <clears throat> what we can see here uh, we uh, our country we the three positive cases confirmed and quarantine in hospital sungai buloh the first case is at 29 january 2000 20 okay uh, this is the first wave of what we call uh, the pandemic uh, we have in malaysia and then we and move to february uh, the, the the first three positive case is from the uh, foreigner the chinese tourists and at the february the first nation infected so the history is traveling to singapore and then in coming to the third March 2020, so we already get the increasing of the positive case to 99, reported by Ministry of Health. So in the March also, uh, <clears throat> our government have decided to announce the MCO, okay, Movement Control Order, started on 18 March until 31st of March. So there will be a first phase of our MCO. Uh, our governments are really uh, good. They take um, good action, uh, earliest prevention um, method to protect or to keep the this COVID-19 not to spread to the local people. Okay, we move on to April, 1st April within one month total positive cases raised to 2908 so from here what we can see here how the the aggressive of the covid 19 virus very fast they spread to the community or to the human so the the key factor that happened increasing of the number and in, in april as we also know uh, from the sri pataling religious gathering uh, due to one of religious gathering and a spread to others okay and in the april also do we have another continuous mco announced by the uh, government started uh, first until 4 april that become a second phase of the mco and then we move to may the director general report uh, 69 new case okay bringing the total number of cases to nine uh, six thousand and seventy one uh, other than that with a, a preventive measure by the government, by the Ministry of Health, uh, we also get a good uh, outcome from the recovery patient after they are infected. The case of recovery is 4,210. <clears throat> okay, so we move on to CMCO, okay, control movement order, and, and June we getting more better control this virus uh, COVID-19 and the Prime Minister 
announce of RM RMCO recovery uh, movement control order started June until until 31st August uh, until today okay so the case uh, keep increase but uh, for now as all of you know that we if I'm not mistaken uh, yesterday or previous day we already got zero local case so this could uh, congrats to Malaysian people follow the SOP even we have opened our sector economy sector shop uh, religious uh, place building and others uh, uh, part of the economy sector but we still manage to control the, the COVID-19 case to the uh, lowest number okay next we move on to the next slide oh, this slide is okay so uh, radiographer what is who is radiographer actually okay <clears throat> radiographer also known as a radiologic technologist in some country they call radiologic technologies uh, in our country they call radiographer sometimes they call uh, dynastic radiographer and in Malay they call jury x-ray and some country they call medical radiation technologies is a healthcare professional who specialize in the imaging of human anatomy for the diagnosis and treatment of the pathology and the term of radiographer also refer to a therapeutic radiographer also known as a radiation therapist okay in Malaysia instead of we call jury x-ray we yeah, or jury x-ray diagnostic we also have a jury x-ray therapy in, and as known as a radiation therapist okay um job scope of radiographer mainly we do imaging to patient uh, for example we do x-ray we do ct scan we do mri we do some center radiographer also do ultrasound um, okay we do uh, another imaging like mammogram <clears throat> and some center uh, radiographer also managed to do uh, nuclear imaging and another part we assist in uh, operation theater for surgeon to operate any case of the bone fracture and the, the uh, x-ray guy radiology department radiographer also assist uh, doctors to do angiogram okay this is a uh, uh, little bit uh, uh, what is the main job scope of radiographer we do imaging products uh, produce imaging for diagnosis and after that we plan our doctor plan for the treatment okay <clears throat> next slide uh, okay so after the COVID-19 pandemic I think most of all of us uh, know about safety and guideline okay common common signage or uh, SOP or guideline or any signage here now of course we can see uh, symbol of very mass social distance and then hand washing okay no shake hand okay uh, uh, avoid uh, gathering or crowded places. the new this, this one, okay we move to code guideline okay, of health guideline in early February getting in March. so MOH have uh, produced the guideline of Malaysia 
how to handle can be it's very important they have divide into several section and 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 one of the session is about the radiological safety okay okay i think uh two guidelines that provide by uh, moh one is the workplace guideline okay uh this guideline is, is called a management guideline for workplace okay COVID-19 is a respiratory infection caused by a new coronavirus first discovered at, in Hubei province in China. I say when when we <clears throat> when we talk about uh, basically is uh, refer to the uh, our respiratory uh, lung area. Okay, so uh, the symptom that MOH give guideline here the, the symptom of patient or person that affected by COVID-19 either fever, dry cough or tiredness okay in one of sick people affected may become serious ill and develop difficulty in breathing okay uh, COVID-19 is a, a droplet spread with COVID-19 who cough or sneeze within the distance of one meter. Droplet uh, contaminated surface and object by touching contaminated surface and object and the touching their eyes, nose and mouth. Okay, this is what, how the COVID-19 spread to the people or among each other. Okay, and then the incubation period, one to uh, 14 days. And as we know, that's why any uh tourists or any uh, local local Malaysian uh, coming back from overseas they will quarantine 14 days at the quarantine hotel or any other area so that the affected if they are affected by COVID-19 they will not affect uh, other person <clears throat> okay healthcare worker management uh we move to how to prevent an outbreak when we talk about healthcare worker, mostly they are working in the hospital. Okay, so the main, uh, the important things about healthcare worker is we are the frontliner. We will, we have to face uh, to deal with the patient. So it's important to manage the healthcare worker uh, well. So to prevent infected. Uh, COVID-19 to up to us or to any other health worker. So one of the the way is they limit the number of health care worker and the support staff in contact with patient or able or confirmed infection patient. Uh, after the COVID-19 case increase, uh, most hospital have a limit their case mostly uh, COVID-19 hospital like uh, hospital uh, most uh, hospital Sungai Buloh, HKL mostly KKM hospital except certain certain uh, university hospital like uh, UMMC and uh, HUKM so the management have decided to limit the number of the healthcare worker to prevent any affected among the worker and then they also create health education and awareness to the health worker regarding the pathogen involved into the outbreak and infection control measure so the, <clears throat> the education and awareness is very important so we know how to prevent from infected by COVID-19 and what we are supposed to do when we deal with the patient okay and next one exclude uh, healthcare worker with risk to develop respiratory complication, like pregnancy, asthma, and control diabetes. This uh, maybe some of the healthcare worker have the this uh, risk, so they will exclude from deal with this, this uh, COVID nineteen patient. Advise appropriate vaccination. Mostly, I think uh, as a healthcare worker, we are protected with a proper vaccine before we work. So that will be a good enough for us. <clears throat> Next one, uh, we move to healthcare worker management. 
uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the important thing about management is uh, PPE. Okay. All the healthcare worker, including radiographers, we have been trained how to donning and doffing. Okay, donning means uh, how to wear the protective personal protective equipment. Doffing means how to remove it. <coughs> okay. Okay. At the center, a lot of registry of uh, healthcare worker and support staff involved in patient care and the environment. This record a lot is uh, very important so that if some or one of the staff uh, uh, sudden or infected by COVID-19, we can trace who is the contact. So we can prevent from it, uh, the COVID-19 spread to other staff, okay? Educate uh, healthcare worker and support staff to do self-monitoring of symptom and report immediately to supervisor if symptomatic for the management of health should be given accordingly. Okay. <clears throat> During this time, most of healthcare workers, they will alert about monitoring their own self. If they feel uh, not feeling well, fever, coughing, or uh, short of breath, so they should inform the management side. So the management will take uh, another further action to make sure that uh, the healthcare worker is safe and other person or other friend of the healthcare worker are uh, uh, safe from infected by COVID-19. Okay, next, we move to the next slide. Okay, beside of the workplace guideline, uh, MOH also provide radiological guideline. Uh, this uh, basically this uh, more to our job radiological guideline is refer to radiographer job okay this uh, under the annex 24 workflow and work process for radiological examination during covid 19 outbreak <coughs> okay uh, 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 The, the first uh, guidelines you can see here registration, the radiographer, the leg gown for uh, radiation protection, okay, the mobile X-ray machine, the X-ray cassette, the anatomical, uh, anatomical marker, and performing the examination. Okay, during the radiological examination procedure for COVID-19 patient. Um, we have a specific guideline so that we can protect ourselves, radiographer, and also the other staff, including the patient. Okay, the next one is post x ray exposure. Okay, second one is a mobile ultrasound. Some of the radiographer need to do ultrasound, but mostly in hospital will do by uh, medical officer. So this guideline can be used uh, by any of the health uh, pedagogical staff when they are dealing with the COVID-19 uh, patient. Okay, uh, number four here. This is workflow for radiology department. Okay, more. Most, uh, most uh, likely when patient with COVID-19 come to radiology department, we have a strict uh, SOP before patient come down. Uh, or the point here, wherever possible, access through the spread entrance. We have to separate entrance for the patient to come down. Basically, when patient come down for radiology, for imaging, patient will do most is a CT scan imagination. In other imaging, uh, usually radiographer will go up to the ward and ultrasound also uh, medical officer or radiographer will assist to do at the ward. But when regarding the radiology department, most most is uh, the uh, CT scan examination. See? The ward staff have to wait for the call from the radiology staff before sending the patient in order to minimize contact time and imaging department. 
Okay, do, uh, during this COVID-19, the, the workflow arrangement is very important. So, as a radiographer, we need to uh, make sure that uh, that area is uh, minimized by quantity of staff and also the patient. Okay. The case shall, shall be pre-registered before call. This means we prepare first, setting all equipment, the, 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 the road of the way of the patient will come in and out, yeah, what we uh, radiographer should do. And then what uh, usually we will cover the machine properly with uh, sometimes with the <clears throat> plastic cover to protect uh, the machine. And also, they will divide uh, the task to two radiographer. One is the handling with the patient inside the room, and another one will be outside the room or at the control area. Okay, uh, we move on to IS RRT guideline. Okay, International Society of Radiographers and Radiological Technologies also provide the guideline for us. The link is uh, at the slide below. Okay, uh, this is uh, uh, general checklist. For all imaging procedures provided by ISRT. Okay, they have divided to uh, three sections preparation, during, and post procedure. And then they, they have uh, divided into what radiographer will do, the patient consideration, equipment consideration, and imaging room or mobile imaging environment consideration. Uh, most likely, this step uh, must be followed by radiographer before we add the COVID-19 patient in order to prevent of uh, infected the COVID-19 to radiographer and then also another part of the uh, staff or healthcare worker that working with the patient uh, working at the area so what we, what we can see here will uh, okay will the emerging procedure change patient management and could the procedure be delayed is mobile imaging and option suspect the positive case. Uh, this is all that uh, at the next slide, I will discuss about how that PPE that we need to wear when we're dealing with the COVID-19 patient. Okay, this is uh, uh, some summary from the PPE equipment. Okay, at the left side here, general contact with confirm or possible COVID-19 cases. And the right side, okay, the right column, aerosol generating procedure and high risk area, okay. Basic PPE that we need is uh, eye protection to be one of the assessment, full resistance to mask, disposable apron and glove. This is basic. So. Uh, the yellow or orange color here is uh, basic PPE, mask, uh, disposable gown and glove. And uh, the right one, the blue, the green area, we have a face mask here. We have, uh, not face mask, we have a face shield here. Uh, inside there, the face mask, most likely we use uh, N95. We have a full gown. And then, and the glove, okay? Okay, uh, during this uh, pandemic, uh, Malaysian Society of Radiographers also uh, do a position statement by uh, by the Mr. President, Mr. Sawal, we, uh, the MSR have uh, uh, announced the position statement that in, Facts are our member. So the, the point that mentioned by the president, and we are strongly urge all our hospital and institution to consider the nature of the staff work and possible should be 
quote in the trice rule, okay. High level of preventive measures such as, as a full PPA for assigned staff dealing with suspicion in the, their job. Because at the at the first wave of the pandemic, uh, most of hospitals we are facing of the shortest of PPE patient that person under investigation patient or okay. we need to wear PPE so during the earlier phase of uh, COVID-19 uh, stop is very crucial so uh, the, at the, that time there will be uh, some issue that some of the staff not get a proper PPE by the, the by the management side so uh, but after that, by the good uh, management by the minister, we can manage it and also by the initiative by the healthcare worker staff, they create their own PPE to protect themselves also. Okay, uh, I SRT position statement, they also create a statement for uh, radiographer so that Others uh, will alert about the importance of radiographer to protect during their deal with the COVID-19 patient. Okay, this is an example how the PPE were by the uh, radiographer when we're dealing with uh, COVID-19. Uh, at the left side, okay, patient room, the setting this uh, PPE setting is for PUI or person in person under investigation or COVID-19 patient. The right one is uh, also for the PUI and confirmed COVID-19, but the different activity involved here. You can see here the performing arrestal regenerating procedure. Okay, hospital we try to radiographer to get this full PPE on the right. We have face shield, we have N95 mask, we have head cover, we have glove, we have full gown, and then we have also shoe cover. Okay, next slide. Okay, the popular uh, statement in that i heard during this pandemic is there is no emergency in pandemic okay there is no emergency in pandemic uh, what does it mean uh, no emergency in pandemic okay i get one of the explanation here okay the statement here there is no emergency in pandemic you as you as a healthcare worker are forced multiplier your training and experience is available moving the crisis so you are going to be faced with some very difficult moment you are going to have to put your need first okay i'm i'm speaking especially about ppe and your safety okay so the so simple word is uh, no emergency impending I mean, is when we are facing this pandemic, we we have to protect ourselves first, the healthcare worker first, because we are dealing. properly uh, organize the the planning is uh, very important so that's why when we're facing about uh, with the pandemic we have to do a proper plan and get the outcome better for the worker and also for the patient because uh, this is become the issue why because for I think 
the previous uh, year or previous uh, we the pandemic very very I think the last pandemic about a uh, few years ago uh, I don't know I, I cannot remember about the flu pandemic so this is the the largest pandemic happened in the world some country especially our country we never facing about this pandemic before so we have to get or plan new new ar arrangement that's why and when we deal with the patient with pandemic we have to plan properly so there will be no emergency just plan do we Okay. Okay. Radiographers. I divide to to four, and then uh, subtopic here. We have challenges in mentality regarding line management issue, have doning and doping and shortening of uh, PPE. <clears throat> okay, mentality. Uh, from the previous this experience most of radiographer they feel very they are worried or their family so the the mental become uh, uh, very stress when they wearing the PPE and to go in or handle a COVID-19 patient or if one patient and second patient okay uh, uh, uh. Each patient they have to change the PPE, uh, wear a new suit PPE for each patient. One is a physically, of course, in team cases, we have arranged uh, a team. Okay, basically, we have a two radiographer one is uh, handling with the machine, one is handling with the, with the patient. So uh, when one team come to do a procedure, they will be uh, handled for the whole day. Okay. They, uh, this is because we want to protect the, the healthcare workers. from infected so if this thing or the day uh fortunate if I did. so we can trace COVID.
kereta or equip equip uh, uh, equip uh, the the section of the road. We have to wear all of this the PPE cover. Okay, just I mentioned before, two radiographer will attend COVID case by rostering for portable X-ray. This is what normally do in uh, in hospital. This is to to prevent <coughs> uh, uh, radiographer from infected COVID nineteen to others among their colleges. Okay, each radiographer have their own responsibility. Okay. Uh, during the, they are doing the mobile X-ray. Okay, one radiographer will handle the machine. One will handle the patient with the, the imaging receptor or the cassette. We call cassette that will catch. So that will capture the image of the X-ray. Okay. Uh, basically, the the simple word is uh, when attend the COVID nineteen patient for the one case or one patient, we need two radiographer. But in the normal uh, situation, sometimes we also can one case for one radiographer. But in COVID-19 situation, we at least need two radiographer to make sure that the workflow is smooth and the infection control is there. <clears throat> okay, workload. A radiographer workload during COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. As I know. Also in my institution, we have divided uh, radiographer into two teams. For example, team A or team B or team one or team two. This uh, is because we want to uh, protect our radiographer or healthcare worker from being infected. When we create two teams, basically, for example, uh, today is uh, uh, team A uh, on duty. So Tomorrow will be team B on duty. So if team A, one of the team A members infected, so not whole team for it, not whole team of the department infected of the team A because when one of the team team A members infected, whole team will be need to be quarantined. Because of what? Because of the time frame of the quarantine is uh, 14 days. So we will lose whole team if one of the team member <clears throat> this is a special uh, new for, for COVID-19 impact and some center have created the own on team to make sure that the process is uh, going very well we have to treat patient very well so that and then another one is because you want to make this okay. we have number, we have the name of stuff anything happen if the management site can create the type of stuff. third one is management uh, management team uh, in radiographer we will have uh, manage management team this uh, management team is very important. They will create the workflow. The from the uh, how to deal with the question, how to uh, create the SOP, what time patient will come in, uh, the labeling of the room. The management team is important and uh, uh, supply. So this team create they will create uh, or do the PPE DIY PPE. Do it yourself PPE. In order to make sure that each member that daily 
thing with the COVID-19 patient is protected well. Okay. Uh, of course, we have to facing a multiple guideline. At early stage, the guideline become uh, uh, the first, first stage a guideline is like this uh, and then the another two weeks the uh, guideline uh, changed to another to on duty during the pandemic of COVID-19 they have to arrange properly they, they want to prevent of infected staff during this stage, uh, this uh, pandemic. So the management issue is related to uh, duty roster or something like that. And then the patient selection. Uh, patient selection is uh, quite crucial because uh, in radiographer, we usually refer to what uh, the primary team request for imaging. Okay. Uh, so when if the patient need a CT scan, so that is a, a crucial time that we have to, uh, is it patient really need the CT scan imaging because patient have to come down to the department. So uh, this become a very uh, crucial that a discussion with radiologists and the primary team before the case is uh, done. Okay? The third one is essential control. Uh, most likely, infection control, uh, we have to follow, most uh, they refer to PPE, okay, uh, we need to wear full PPE either uh, before the procedure and the post procedure, we have to follow the protocol how to wear how and how to take off, okay, <clears throat> okay, this is workflow of uh, mobile essay, some of the photo here. Okay, this is first radiographer holding the uh, detector before going into the <coughs> isolation area. This is another radiographer handling the machine. So this is one will go in and another one will come to support to do imaging. And the left side is <coughs> some of the workflow that from my institution. Okay. Roughly is like that. Uh, I think I don't need to explain more about this. This is how we divide. Okay. All uh, data will be recorded. Okay. Okay. We have a radiographer one or radiographer two. Okay. This uh, example of the radiographer doing for CT scan. They have to cover the whole CT scan with plastic cover to prevent of. Uh, expected of COVID-19 but uh, in uh, certain uh, for a certain vendor for CT scan machine they said they're not recommended to do this for their machine but in certain uh, hospital they managed to do it then this condition not affected the image quality of the uh, patient that doing the CT scan <clears throat> Okay, regarding the safety, okay, donning and doffing, this is how we wear and take off the, the PPE. Okay, I show you a, a, a little bit about donning. Okay, what you can see here, this is a uh, first step uh, wear shoe cover, wear the N95 mask, wear hood or head cover, okay, put gown. Put another plastic apron, okay, and then wear a glove, another glove, and put face shield, and then the final look is like this. So we come to doffing or remove, okay, step by step, remove the first glove, okay, remove the plastic apron here. The isolation gown. Okay, remove the face shield, remove the head, 
N95 and then last but not least the shoe cover and the mask. Okay. For each this step, radiographer uh, have to do a uh, hand swap for each step before one of the step here each step they have to do a no contaminated uh, happen during the doffing PPE <clears throat> okay this is uh, photo show uh, some of the radiographer uh, for facial uh, themselves okay the sponge the transparent a4 the tape okay cut the uh, the the cover by using a uh, own measurement okay this is very creative okay the, they are using recycle extra filler and double side for the head shield okay it's another example it's quite simple but it's, it's very useful any health okay, session no actually we are now in the new norm of COVID-19. So it's very, at the first stage, it's very difficult time for healthcare worker to deal with it. Uh, for me, it's very crucial time. Okay, this is, uh, but we, we learn a lot about the pandemic when we're facing it with a real situation. Uh, this uh, awesome photo from of the frontliner from uh, HK, HKL, okay. I just share here to to motivate myself and another colleges, okay. <clears throat> uh, we have uh, I get this uh, quote the, uh, about pandemic. We have a change to do something extraordinary. As we head out of this pandemic, we can change the world, create the world of love, a world where we are kind to each other. A world where we are kind, no matter what class, race, sexual orientation, what religion or lack of, or what job we have. A world we don't judge those at the food bank because they must be us if, if things were just slightly different. Let love and kindness be our roadmap by John Con. This uh, 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 quote by the John Con during this pandemic is uh, very nice. To hear that, okay. Okay, I think as a radiographer, this very COVID-19. But the important thing that I want to mention here is uh, protect ourselves. Okay. Uh, authority means uh, uh, the Ministry of Health. They know what they do. We follow the SOP that they like some some like uh, social distancing mask. It don't go to the crowd area. Okay. The third one, we start the new normal life living. Okay. We when we come to the uh, uh, normal life, we have to always remind in our mind. Uh, do not uh, simply uh, do not simply touch something. For me, uh, for me. My experience uh, now we become more concerned about uh, cleanliness. Okay, when we go to shop, 
we always uh, alert about the cleanliness, uh, the hand sanitizer, and then the mask. Okay. And the fourth one, support healthcare worker fights against pandemic. Uh, we, as a healthcare worker, and I'm as a radiographer, we need uh, support or motivation from community so that all the healthcare worker will continuously for the past three months they have worked very hard to fight uh, COVID-19 pandemic. They sacrifice their family, they sacrifice their time, they sacrifice their life. Okay, they, they sacrifice everything to make sure that uh, uh, this pandemic is over. But now we are getting more and more better, and we hope uh, we can settle this uh, pandemic very well and we will become more uh, easier for us in the living life okay this is come to the end of my presentation okay thank you very much to all listeners uh, i hope uh, we will share or we will see in another session okay uh, for for now, thank you to all listeners, thank you to all radiographer, thank you to all doctors, nurses, medical assistants, thank you to all frontliners. Okay, we get back to Miss Moderator, Miss uh, Shazwin. Thank you, Mr. Muzake. Such an interesting session, isn't it? Okay, um, okay, now we will go ahead with a Q&A session. Okay. Probably the viewer have some question. Okay, it looks like we have a question here from Mr. Lutfi Halim. Uh, the question is, can I have the expert opinion on the panel on whether radiographers face the same level of risk as medical practitioners? in dealing with COVID-19 pandemic, especially if we look at the countries where COVID-19 pandemic is badly hit. Maybe you can give some comment on as a radiographer. Mr. Muzake. Okay, good question. All right. Okay, for me, as a, my, from my uh, experience, even I'm not, not dealing directly with the COVID-19 patient, but I have dealing with uh, PUI patient, but the the <clears throat> the risk for me is depend on how you protect yourself. Okay. Okay. But the time when if you protect yourself with PPE with proper PPE, I think the risk is become equal to all healthcare worker okay as far as i know in malaysia no uh no case of infected um covid 19 to healthcare worker from the patient as i know okay the healthcare worker affected by covid 19 is not because of the patient in malaysia due to uh, uh friend and uh, on another source, not from the patient, as I know. So the risk is uh, for me is uh, the but but the but the for the uh, they will be safe because. That's why uh, we create or we generate the SOP. So that's why we give uh, uh, guidelines so that the healthcare worker will follow. So I think the risk is uh, fair to any healthcare worker. If you follow the SOP, you wear the PPE with the correct way, you do uh, hygiene process and then, okay, should be safe. Okay, because I think most of the uh, we look at the because the question is especially if you look at country that COVID nineteen badly hit because I think the the, the infected happen because of the, the shortest shot uh, of the PPE itself maybe there some of lack of PPE 
yeah. and then the case is too too many so they cannot cope so the incident is there so maybe uh, one or two so not for me in Malaysia the risk is equal for medical practitioner any other question okay maybe we can offer another question okay from miss sharmila lingam okay there's one question from her is chest x-ray necessary in detecting covid 19 patient and her second question is what are the radiology appearance for covid 19 patient on chest x-ray hmm. necessary in detecting, in detecting COVID-19. From my uh, knowledge, uh, chest, is, chest x-ray is one of the way to detect COVID-19 because but the, the main the main uh, uh, source of the main uh, way to detect COVID-19 is do the RCPT, uh, uh, the, the, the swab test that we send to the lab because that is the, the first or the major thing that to detect COVID-19 because chest x-ray most likely is depend on the primary team how they manage the case because when patient have the symptom we can do x-ray but if patient don't have the symptom if we request for un unnecessary chest x-ray for me it's not justified to, to do chest x-ray okay Okay, and then her second question is, uh, she's asking about the radiology appearance on COVID-19 patient. Oh, radiology experience. Oh, radiology appearance. Radiology okay. appearance. Uh, okay. Most likely on, basically on chest x-ray previous that uh, I have saw in the chest radiograph, the, the appearance is very, what we call, sometimes is we can see like uh, uh, pneumonia x-ray but some x-ray we, we can see the in the normal word what we call a, a white spot something like that uh -uh. okay but uh, it still uh, is uh, just uh, uh, what we call uh, radiological airplane is just uh, uh, to to support the result from the rt -PC pcr test that we that we done by the patient i mean the swab test okay but if the patient have the symptom uh, coughing and then so throat so when we do chest x-ray the appearance is there that can be uh, uh, suspected affected by covid 19 but if we do only chest x-ray and we do and we saw something radiologic appearance in this x-ray something like uh, pneumonia we, we definitely can confirm that that is a COVID-19 positive we still depend on the lab test result uh for, for me radiology as a as supportive uh, measure in case
So, okay, so maybe we can go to next question. Okay, this is a good question from Miss Mariam Balma. What team A is on call? Does team B have to be quarantined? What team A is on call? Hmm. Hmm, I'm a bit confused about the question. <laughs> I, think, I think she's asking about the team A and team B that you discuss uh, based on rotational working hours, oh, isn't it? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, this, what is it mean with team A and team B? Okay. Uh, from my experience, the, the 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 creation of the team A and team B is uh, to prevent of the whole team being infected by COVID nineteen. For example, in one department we have uh, twenty uh, radiographer or staff. Okay, we divide into one team is ten person, another team is ten person. Okay, these two team will. Work different time. For example, from um, to find a by COVID nineteen. So the the whole team that contact with that man. Okay, so I think we go to the next question. Okay, uh, as a radiographer, yourself as a radiographer, how do you observe public cooperation on COVID-19 SOP at the hospital you're residing? How, how about the cooperation? How is the, how public perceive the COVID-19 SOP? Okay, from, okay, from my observation in hospital, at uh, early stage, uh, uh, there are some some uh, uh, difficult to handle with the patient because they said uh, this one is very uh, strict, uh, too too much uh, to register, to fill in the form, and then to take temperature. They said this is a very what we call uh, not they're not feeling happy with the the the, the way. I mean the workflow because. They say this is to reject something. Uh, how many times I want to fill in the form? Because in certain hospital, when we entrance the hospital area, we have to scan and we have to record patient name and come to uh, radiology department. Another time, you have to, <laughs> to scan and to record the name twice in, at the same uh, hospital. So. Uh, some patients at the early stage they complain, but nowadays uh, I realize they have uh, understand the situation. They understand why we do like that. Uh, the important of recording the temperature, recording the uh, the attends to the clinic. So the the purpose the purpose is to to trace if anything happen. If if we detect one of the patient in the clinic or the radiology department positive. So we need to trace all patients. Either the patient have the contact with the positive patient. So uh, for now, I think most of the patient or most of the uh, community understand the, the SOP. They are following follow very well. Uh, you can also saw at the shopping complex shop. Okay, all follow the SOP. You can scan the temperature. So for me. Uh, this problem only happened during the earlier phase, but now people are getting more understand. 
and the cooperation is uh, quite well. That's why we getting decrease of the number of the case. Okay, all right. Thank you, Mr. Muzaki. Great. Okay, it looks like we cover all of the questions. Um, is there anything that you want to add up, Mr. Muzaki, before we wrap up our session for today? Okay, uh, last but not least, uh, before we end this session, I would like to thanks to Masa University uh, for this session. Uh, at least uh, I share my experience and my uh, little knowledge about uh, radiographic really experience uh, facing with the pandemic COVID-19. And I hope uh, any watcher or listener here uh, want to share the experience, maybe we can another session or with another panel. So thank you, Masa, with this good session. So we alert all of the community uh, during this pandemic, okay? Uh, as I know, Masha have doing a lot of uh, this session before the previous session to share among the community, among the Masa community, the student, okay? At least uh, after this, uh, the community alert how to protect themselves, <clears throat> what the health, uh, healthcare worker do, what the, for me, what, what the radiographer do. So we, we expose to community. So this is a good uh, session for me and I hope Masha will, Masha University will continue this session for good. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Shazwin. All right, thank you, Mr. Muzake. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, now I would like to make some important announcement about online our online courses in Faculty of Health Sciences. Uh, feel free to browse our course offered and don't forget to follow Masa University and Medical Imaging Facebook page to get any latest updates. Uh, so then, thank you for joining us today. That's all for today. And of Bye. course, we hope to see you again next time. Thank you, Mr. Muzake. Bye. Bye.